viewers and listeners. I think uh, I, I did hear the majority leader uh, try to explain himself on a radio station, but uh, I, I did not get the details of it. I mean, on the face of uh, what uh, is being said, if it is the case that, in fact, uh, the deputy speaker of parliament, uh, somebody that I have enormous respect for, and I'm a little bit cautious in my criticism of him, because I think by his nature and what I know of him, if he really said that, that will be at variance with the kind of person that I know him to be. And if it is the case, uh, no matter what explanation is being given, I'll deem it as an irresponsible statement. Mm. Because a person of his caliber, I doubt if that is uh, the right prescription that he'll be given relative to solving the Galamse menace. Mm. And as I did indicate, I say that with a caveat because I haven't heard from him personally, but I don't think anything of that sort should be what should be encouraged. But I tend to believe that this whole issue uh, relative to what he said or did not say, uh, brings to bear a very important subject. That is Galamse fight. If you remember, uh, I think about a year ago, I mean, a group was formed, Vanguard, Operation Vanguard, to address this Galamse uh, menace. Mm -hmm. As it stands now, I would have wished that at least we get a report of where we are in terms of the fight against Galamse. Uh, are we making any successes? Uh, the approach that is being used, uh, is it yielding any results? I've heard the, 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 the commander, the national commander, one colonel, uh, lament about the slow pace of uh, prosecution when it comes to these issues and even uh, the, the, the kind of punishments that are being meted out to them, where people are fined a thousand and two thousand mm. and when they are done, they go back. I think as a nation, and I, I hope it starts from parliament because these are very important people when it comes to the, the the dispensation of law in this country. I think something stiffer needs to be done in terms something of... Something stiffer? Yes. But not no, no, shoot no, no, to no, kill? No, 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 shoot to kill. I mean, that is... No, it's not even negotiable. Shoot the reason why I'm pushing that is because I've heard, state. I've heard some security experts say that, well, a shoot to kill, nah, that shouldn't happen. We haven't reached there yet. We cannot Which reach there. Which suggests that... We cannot reach there. A shoot to kill policy... No, no, we cannot. We, employed uh, at a certain we time. Cannot, so we haven't reached there yet. That's what you think. We cannot reach there. We cannot the only or we time, haven't. No, we cannot reach there. Our environment no, is at stake. No, I agree. I agree. Look, we are, we are a civilized society. Mm. And civilized societies have laws. The only time that a military can shoot somebody is if the person is in combat. If it so happens that they go and they are being shot at, then there's something called self defense. You guys are lawyers, and I think you know better than I do. But Given a prescription of shoot to kill is something that we can never get there. But I think that this provides us an opportunity to look at how we can come up with mm. policies that one way or the other will be safer and will be more, uh, one that will deter these guys from getting into that activity. Because let's face it, if somebody is fined a thousand Ghana or two thousand Ghana for engaging in Galamse, mm -hmm. even look at how much it costs the state to even what, uh, mount a prosecution. And the person is fined just 2,000 Ghana. Look at how much it costs the state to even mobilize this force to be able to go there to, uh, to fight uh, these uh, Galanseyes. Mm. So I think uh, as a nation, since we are the people paying uh, for the services of the military or the operation, we need to get a briefing of where we've got into, where we are before this operation started. Mm. What are some of the challenges that they are facing and what are the recommendations that they need to be put in place? Making a recommendation of shoot to kill, I think, as I said initially, I mean, it's it's something that cannot be negotiated, and I find it uh, uh, out, quite of, out of out of order. Yeah. Kojo, what do you think? Have we? This is our environment that we're dealing with. Uh, coming obviously from the lawmaker, clearly shows a certain level of frustration with the whole issue. Our water bodies are being polluted. Mm -hmm. We stand a risk of importing water in 20 years. That was what the Ghana Water Company Limited said sometime last year. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, with, with some measures put in place, perhaps the situation is improving. But we still stand that risk. Yeah. Lands are being degraded. Farmlands, I must add. Haven't we reached the point where we need to take drastic measures? I think we've gone past the point where mm -hmm. we take drastic measures. You see, um, we started this fight with civilians. The Ghana Water Resource Body were the ones doing this fight of Kalamzee. 
You see, when it comes to Ghana, I'm saying people doesn't want to separate small scale miners from the illegality mm. of a galamse. A galamse is like a criminal. He is the same. <laughs> no, he is a criminal, honestly. He is in the same vein as a thief. And look, when this started, I, I have a uh, family land in the uh, Nan uh, Nananko mm. area. And in the Nananko, I am free area. I got to a point when you go there and you are visiting the family house, you see them doing galamse on the side, and nobody was really paying attention to them because we all felt that oh, he's doing something small, idle hands, you know that kind of thing. So everybody just turned a blind eye to galamse initially. Mm. Then they got brave and started going big, and people started getting excavators and then now digging. Then so if we turn I, a blind eye all this while, why do we, we not we turn have, around no, and say? Let me. I'll get that now. Mm. Then I started doing a project on the Ankobra, and we went there with the uh, head of Ghana Resource Water Commission mm. to go and visit the site. When we were on the canoe on the Ankobra, the Galamse people who were doing alluvia on the bed of the mine was waving at us. <laughs> This is where the guy who can arrest them and take them and prosecute them is passing. They are waving. So we now felt that we couldn't end there. So when His Excellency General Mahama came on board, he now got uh, the police and the also form. Uh, mm. And now, after a while, he now said, okay, there should be no movement of uh, excavators without a district sanctioning it and all that. He didn't get us anywhere. So since 2017, when this administration came in, they've said that, look, we have declared war on Galamse. And when you declare war, they brought in the tax force, which is made mostly of the military. Abna, you would have thought that with all that has been going on, like Dota is asking for an update, mm. nobody who have heard that there should be no Galamse will not be doing Galamse because we've stopped the small-scale miners, so really and truly, nobody should be on the land doing Garamse. we sent our military, our Police. last line of defense as a country, and they go there, and these guys are standing their ground. They're there, mm. doing the Garamse, the military is coming, and they're looking at them, wanting to wave at them the same way they were waving at the Ghana Water Resource Commission boss. So what, what do they do? You see, for it to get to parliament and for them to ban, it's a level of frustration. It's a level, look, if they saw the military and run, they wouldn't do anything to them. Let me add, when we started this fight of Galamse, if it's not war, which party has been killed? Haven't they killed the military? Mm. They've killed the military. So if you send just one military guy to that area, they'll kill him. And I'll repeat, if you send, if just one military person finds his way in the midst of the Galamse people who are there today doing Galamse and you try to challenge them to stop, they'll kill him. The same way they killed the unfortunate gentleman who died some time ago. So right. we know that they will kill. So what is wrong if they kill? You see, we sit in a comfort at home and think that this thing is easy. It's not. It's money. The same way in Colombia, coca and cocaine now went into the fact rebel. Mm and became a menace where the government now, the country is run by two different. If we are not careful, we have the same in Ghana because it's money. And where is money, you have godfathers. And when you have godfathers, they can always procure arms for these people to stand their ground. Mm. And that is what we are trying to promote. We should all have one voice as a nation, be it MPP, CPP or whatever, to say that, look, wrong is wrong. Let's support our military to do what is necessary. If they have to bend them, bend them. And then we're ready for the consequences. What, come what, with it. what consequences, my dear? Look, we lived in this country from 79. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, let me laugh. We yes, lived in this country from 79. Uh -huh. The only thing Ghanaians are, are scared of. But this when, when, no, when but, it, no, a democracy. No, but my point is that you yes. know the fear uh -huh. that His Excellency John Derry John put in Ghanaians. Uh -huh. That's the only thing Ghanaians are scared of. Democracy is not for us. Look at what but we are practicing no, but, it nonetheless, yes, but, but, but and we, we, we are bound by the principles. Look at how we are practicing it, and mm -hmm. look at how we are bastardizing every society in this country. Either way, we're no, still but, but bound we, by we those principles. We know principles, that, but my point is we? that we have imported something onto our own to run. Mm -hmm. It's fine, but my point is that if the military, our last line of defense, is on the ground to protect the environment, and they themselves and are, are not even safe, and they are not even safe, the one has been killed. Mm. So in that battle, they've lost one. Mm. And they are asking, because you see, well, if you hear Mr. Nitu, Honorable Nitu, uh -huh. his voice tells you that the military is frustrated. 
because their hands are tight. They're not being able to do the way they're supposed to do it. Because if the military goes and the Galazi people wave at the military, then we've lost the fight. Isn't it for us as a country to put in place better ways of dealing with this than resort to what is the, my this dear, what kind, is the better which has been described by no. some as barbaric no, but, but a thief i mean you don't condemn we have the rule of law a person accused of a crime has a right to be sent to court put up a defense and all of that when you, when are we that's willing when, that's when to shelve catch, that that's and when then you catch him yes but this okay. one you're going to so catch then them when you catch the, the thief well. no mm -hmm. you see you're not getting it wrong when you a thief I'm not comes to wrong, then that's fine. if no, if a thief comes mm -hmm. to your house and he has machete mm -hmm. and a gun fighting you for your belongings, yeah. do you arrest him or do you fight back? I mean, I mean, that, at that point, if Thank you defend you. yourself, so the military, the shot to kill the military the is asking for. Mm -hmm. It's not to go and the minute they see that I'm saying people, they open fire. Mm. I, I don't think that is what we are doing. Very you see, well we are taking it out of context. It is not to just see the military people. It's not the military see that I'm seeing people and they are shooting them. No. They want that last resort that if they are challenged and the people want to stand their ground, what do they do? Very well. Let me come to John, your, your, your perspective on this. You're a lawyer. Yes. Clearly, you would have this whole thing about criminal jurisprudence and everything at the back of your mind. Yes. Let us know how you reconcile this call against what you are trained to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, it's a very difficult situation. I'm happy my brother spoke before me. Mm. Because, I did that on purpose. Yes, because <laughs> I, I didn't understand the contest until he explained. Mm. Um, I mean, being an energy expert and being in the field for a while, he seemed to agree with the call for certain drastic actions to be taken. Because, mm. I mean, Doc said it, the caliber of personalities making the call, the first deputy speaker of parliament, supported by the majority leader, must tell you that these are not people who have the inclinations to call for uh, actions in this nature. Mm -hmm. And then listening to what is going on even with the military on the ground, then you realize that we are being pushed beyond certain levels. And so we may have to justify a further drastic action to see if we'll be able to fight the situation. Look, as we speak, because of activities of Galamseyes, apart from the water bodies that are destroyed, those who have the proper license to operate yes, as small-scale miners mm -hmm. are being denied their livelihood. But you see, Kojo in his submission made a point, and I want us to look at that too. He said... I mean, he talked about, I don't know if it's, that was your hometown you mentioned. Yeah, yes. I, I agree. That you could see people do that, but I mean, we just turned a blind eye to it, and now it's blown out of proportion. So it's now that we are seeking to act. So my question is, after pretty much acquiescing, is it justified now to say, let's turn on them brutally well, as a country? Because clearly, we are waking up from slumber. Exactly. And, and then we happy, like it or not, that is the truth of the matter. Yes, I'm very happy this discussion is going on in Parliament. Let's not forget, we are talking about law. If our lawmakers think that where we've got into, this is the way to solve it, I'm all for it. That's just one uh, or two of them out of the well, but, 275. Yes, but uh, they look at their caliber. They belong to the leadership of the House. And mm. if they speak, don't take it for granted. So if this is where we've got into, and the only way to solve it, even if it means in the interim, is to resort to such actions in order to put the fear of God in some of the people. Because the reality is that all those in Galamse are fully armed. Mm -hmm. Unless you haven't been to any Galamse site, they are fully armed with all kinds of guns. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to fight or to arrest such people, I don't know how you're going to do it if you don't have the authority to also use your gun to arrest a person who has a gun. If you have arrested a person, that is where his rights to defense and all the laws enshrined in our constitution come in. But if at the point of arrest, the person is fighting you back, what do you do? Mm. So these are difficult issues to deal with. And looking at the, the caliber of people making the call, we must all know that we have gotten to a blink where if maybe a drastic action is not taken, we are going to lose the fight. And if we lose the fight against Galamse, all the water bodies and the consequences on the environment, we may not be able to handle it. And if we fear to, to fight this, this uh, uh, menace at this level, we are going to get to a stage where we, all of us will be involved, our water bodies. We may, I've heard that we may even have to import water at True. a certain point. Yeah. So it is not 
something that excites anybody to call for shoot to kill. But if you are left with no choice, if in the process of arresting these people, they are uh, uh, taking out their guns, what do you expect the police or the military to do? Mm. So they are not saying that after you have arrested them, kill them. But if in the process of arresting them, they come out with their guns, how else can they react? Mm. And you cannot say that you are shooting to this arm, especially if it's not one person. <laughs> you don't know the next person to fire you. So Doc said that soldiers are only allowed to shoot when they are at war. We have declared that war. So I think there's a combat situation. But we, we, we'll, no, we'll interrogate but that it some is more. very but important we, we, yes. that we agree that where we are now, if we don't fight to regain the environment, we are losing it completely. Very well. We will need to interrogate it some more, but we'll take a break. When we come back, um, we'll have... Uh, further discussions or interrogations into this matter. Exactly what does the shoot to kill approach entail? What are the parameters that yeah. would be, you know, um, uh, will need to be complying with in that policy? We'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. The past. My name is Lord Gibson. The present. Father, forgive me. I am saint. And the future have an appointment with the Gibsons. Sister Judith, who are my parents? What is it again? Honey, please. All his enemies are and they're stupid to know that she was. So, what family name was given to the child? Child trafficker. You smuggler. I will destroy your mother. Everybody has a secret, but some have deadly secrets. Like the secrets of the Gibsons, which is sitting on a time bomb, waiting for Sadia to make it explode. Sadia is coming home to a family she never knew or heard of through her lifetime, and the odds are not in her favor. TV3 presents Sadia, Ghana's most engaging and thrilling drama series. Get ready to be mesmerized and fall in love with Sadia over and over again as the story unfolds. Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. only on TV3. Sadia will tell your story. TV3, first news, best in entertainment. See anybody holding arms want to attend to you. Don't waste time. Yes, Can they shoot better than us? No, sir. No matter where the story breaks, News Hour on 3 FM 92.7 will bring you every detail, making you feel as if you were there when the story happened. Every Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., News Hour on 3 FM 92.7 is all about attention to facts or attention to sensationalism. The NPP cannot be underestimated. Indeed, the Mahama government had the best eurobond rate of 7.875%. From biased news updates, from the economy to sports. Tune in to News Hour on 3 FM 92.7, Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And streaming live on 3news.com. You can also join us on Twitter at 3 FM 927 and on Facebook, 3 FM 92.7. 3 FM 92.7, fair and square. Many Ghanaians don't really understand the bigger issues in our society. When information meets common sense, true reformation is born. Tune in to late edition on 3FM 92.7, Monday through to Thursday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. for a brighter view of the stories making the headlines. When you win election, it's not, you don't win a lot. You win a responsibility. If it matters to the nation's well-being, then... It matters to late edition on 3FM 92.7. Join the conversation as we activate the phone lines for you. And also on Twitter at 3FM 927 and on Facebook 3FM 92.7. My name is Alfred Okanse. Let's share the common sense perspective of all the trending issues and breaking news on late edition. Monday through to Thursday, 3pm to 4pm. Also streaming live. Welcome back. You're listening and watching to New Day Saturday. This we're live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online around the world at 3news.com. Also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. We've been joined by um, Mr. Roxin Nelson Dafiamoko. He's an honorable member of 
Parliament for South Dai constituency. He's also a lawyer. You're welcome, Honorable. Thank you, my dear. Great. I'll be coming to you very shortly for your perspective on this, you know, shoot to kill policy. But let me go back to um, John Kuma for him to wrap up on his yeah, submissions. So in wrapping up, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember the Fulani minutes that we discussed recently and when the issue of shoot to kill came up because these Fulanis were fully armed to the teeth and mm -hmm. the only option was to also fight them back. I think gradually they are now coming down and gradually we are being told that different arrangements are being made for ranches to be built for them, but still it is clear. And they know that if you breach the rules, then you, you, are, you, you leave yourself to blame. So uh, where we are now with the mining situation, we can't let, it's a choice between our environment, either they and mine to kill us, or <laughs> if they resist the arrest of, uh, the, the attempt to arrest them, then obviously, I mean, if parliament, what I'm saying is that at the moment it is an illegality to shoot to kill them. But if Parliament, the House that makes the law, decides that where we are now, let's empower them with a regulation or a law that will allow them to defend themselves and also to kill anybody who shoots at them, I don't have any difficulty at all, Very as well. long as that will help fight the problem. Very well. Thank you. Now let me go to the Honorable Member of Parliament, Mr. Rosen. Your perspective on this. This is, you know, a call for shooting to kill people caught in the act. And this is the environment we're talking about. How, you're also a lawyer to join. How do you reconcile what you know in the law in terms of the criminal jurisprudence, the right to, be, to defense and all of that, innocent until proven guilty, all of that, as against this call, which obviously is coming out of frustration? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Let me use the opportunity to say good morning to my constituents in Southern Peki Kwali Preven Tongo. I have I have sat quietly across, um, listened to Doctor speak, listened to my brother, and of course John Kuma. I yes, uh, we are in desperate times, but it doesn't call for desperate measures. But the president came to Parliament to say that. It is time we, we look for desperate measures. He actually used that expression. And so I can understand the strategies being employed by the tax force. But as a lawyer, it is reprehensible for me to sit in parliament and actually hear my first deputy speaker. And this wasn't the first time. Actually, during the Fulani debate, he made a similar call. And, and the records are there. And so I'm beginning to feel that, yes, he's, he, 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 he's, he's, he thinks that the situation has gone out of hand. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like the president said, desperate measures. But you see, But then he quotes, he quotes a constitutional provision to I, support his case. And perhaps for the purpose of this conversation, yes. we could read that out yes, just to do. give it some context. He says, he quotes Article 13 and says... It, it, was, no, it was majority leader. Who quoted 13? Yes, very well, too, to yes, back in, that in up. In support of the debates of the call by Exactly. The yes, thanks for that. He says, no person shall be deprived of his life intentionally except in the exercise of the execution of a sentence of the court in respect of a criminal offense under the laws of Ghana of which he has been convicted. And then he goes on to say that, I do not think that the Constitution, insofar as a matter is criminal, frowns upon the use of force to the extent that it may even deprive some other people of their lives. Do you now, think this is a tenable? It, it, it is an erroneous interpretation mm. of the constitutional provision. Mm -hmm. It's an erroneous interpretation. So it's not, it's not, it's not it's, it doesn't justify that. Court, there's, yeah. a provision, there's a provision on when a crime is, is, is alleged to have been committed. What should happen? Now, if the state is failing to deal with the matter, the state has no right to commit a crime. Or officers of state. Indeed, if you commit a crime, you are on your own. <laughs> so, to, to, to state the point that the person, the, the, the official should shoot and kill. In fact, he, he didn't even say to shoot and kill those, those, those uh, involved in Galamsey, but he placed it in contest. And the cause of the debate is when you see anybody on the water, shoot and kill him. <laughs> You understand? And so, so we, uh, for instance, I, I rose in, a, in an uproar on water. 
So if I'm just in a boat, in a canoe, and I'm sailing by in, in, in a highly polluted... You are an endangered Cuba. species. Yes. You just, you just, I'll just receive a bullet. But I want to place the debate in context. Sure. The entire mining, as we know it, if you know the history of mining in this country, it began in a form of a galamse. Our forebears in the 18s began mining by digging the grounds. Then the colonial masters enacted laws to, to regulate mm -hmm. the, the mining operations. Then they moved in and took it over. Now, what if you know the areas uh, my brother spoke of, and I know this country very well. Now, the mining is done in even northern Ghana. Yes, yes. Not, last not week, only in the south. Dr. Park was here. He because you see, I, I read an article the last time. It is because the Chinese have revolutionized the, the alluvial mining. What have they done? They've developed gadgets that can detect the existence of mineral, precious mineral in our, in our neighborhoods. Here too, you have to go, you know, it took a lot of work to even detect the well. all bearing min minerals. Now they have equipment. It, it, it functions like a remote sensing. When they zone the area and they scan, you see it in the spectrum. You see the all bearing minerals, you know, in, in a certain coloration. So they're moving. So now in the areas that are an endemic with, with <coughs> these precious minerals, you have houses of people, persons. In fact, people are selling their homes to these people. So I can understand that it's become a, a developmental matter. But it does not in it by any stretch of the imagination call for a martial law. So tell me, at what point do you think we would need to get there? Or just as Dr. Ahmed, you think we cannot even get there? Now, look, you'll be, you'll be shocked to see that these smaller groups Persons we have categorized as galamsey. It is, and it's also because of the manner of the operation. Because, like he said, there are other small it's mining okay. companies. We're doing it who are licensed, but have to be. Yeah, but have been have been held in because of the euphoria. So they have also been affected adversely. They are actually licensed either by Minerals Commission for 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 taking the concessionaire, or they pay something to the various assemblies. You know, for, for in areas that they operate. So the point is that it has to be banned. But I'll speak and, and touch on the incident that happened in, the, in, 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 in Tamale. Look, if you move to a sun winning and in a, a, a minerals and mining law, a mineral is defined, even sand is defined as a mineral, anything that you extract from the ground sand, salt, all those well, I describe as mm. mineral. So if you go to a sand winning pit or an area where they win sand for purposes of construction and you think the continuous sand winning will, will have adverse environmental consequences for the, the, the stream that feeds uh, that supply water to the metropolitan area you you cordon it off. Mm. You stop the operations. And you give the people a different area and you relocate them. Now, if you move in and there are tracks, you don't bend them. There are laws governing how these things are done. You confiscate the tracks and you auction them. We could have gotten money from that. And you see, there, there, are, there are laws available. And when the owners decide that they'll sue the state, to sue the state and proceed in damages. Because, you see, I, I may be a truck owner. I have no idea that my vehicle is being used mm. in such an operation. It may not be an illegal operation. Because the, the area, I understand, is a, a, there's a concession for sound winning. They are, they, they, are like, they, are, they are permitted by the Tamale Metropolitan Assembly and all that. I've seen some documents. So, let us take a step back and institute regimes. And the regimes are that... But like look, you said, this is a desperate 
Yes. That's a desperate Yes, period. but it doesn't go but for a much longer. So I, what, that's, see, I go back to the question. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the question. Yes. What will be the tipping point? Now, the, the tipping point... Beyond, it, it beyond, appears that we've beyond what we know. Point yes, it already. appears that is or why, we have. That is why my, my first deputy speaker, who makes such a call. But you see, even in the Fulani uh, instance, the Fulanis are Ghanaians. Honestly, a lot of them have been born here. No, but I don't think the call to, to shoot no. to kill them is because they are not Ghanaians. No. It's, it's because of no, what no, they are the, doing. The, the, a, lot of the, a lot of the debates, even this one, the, the, an, an aspect of the debate are, are, is that the, most of the people engaging Galamseyes are non Ghanaians. They, they come from the West African sub region and all that. No, I, I, have, I, have, I have heard those aspects of the debate. And I think that human life is human life. We cannot be asking our security people to shoot and kill. Innocent persons may be engulfed, may be... I go may back to the question, in. what would be the tipping point? So or the tipping, we, we are already, there will never be a tipping no, point. No, no, we are already at the tipping point. That is why some of these calls... Yes, are coming. So, so however desperate they sound, are being, are, being, are, are being preferred. Now, we have to ban the activity completely. It's been it's banned. It's illegal. You see, how do you ban a hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, it is not illegal. Galamse? Yes. Me, me, see, honorable. It is not illegal. Let Galamse me tell you. Illegal. Let me tell you. Illig You're we, talking we about there, there is the small scale mining. Yes, yes, that one. But no, there no, is the galam exactly thing. what we speak of. Because no, you see, no. no. So why did you stop the small scale mining? It's to regularize the whole process, they, the whole because arrangement. Because when they are on the field, you cannot tell the small scale uh, miner from exactly the galam thing. Exactly, by oppression. Yes. So by the way, by the mm -hmm. nature of the alluvial, exactly. the, the alluvial mining. You can't tell... Yes, mm. and that's what makes it illegal because you're resorting to certain measures that no, are no, 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 no. Let me let me, let me let, let me let me let me make the argument. Make, finish, yes. You see, you have licensed somebody to operate legitimately in a manner that is that is seeming of a galamse operation. It's seeming, but it's not good because you can't differentiate. Those so who are not illegal. Sorry, that's a but point. There's illegal. still a distinction. Sorry, there is still, it makes it, it, makes it illegal, illegal because you have. Oh, you see, listen to me. Please allow him to finish. Listen to me. Let me finish. 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 Let me is to operate the motorbike in a commercial manner. Exactly. So if you're doing that, it's illegal. Good. Now, when they are on the street, you can't tell which one is a commercial. And that's why motor. you have to ban them to go to put exactly them in place. And that's, what, that's what, that's what we, I'm currently saying. is happening. Ban the activity of small scale mining. But, but it's, it's been, been banned. banned. It's been banned. No, you license but people. Why do you think they are petitioning but, government? But there is a ban until the minister came out and said. And it was recently ban. extended. Yes, you see, you see, so you, we ban it completely. So that if you are, if you, you mean it will never come to yes, you. if you tend to go into mining, see, okay, pull your resources together and do large scale, and do large scale mining, okay. so that we know that you are into large scale mining. We but can. would that be would that be fair? Yes, it will be fair because you see, like I use the moto, the 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 the, the, comment, the Okada situation. You can't tell which one is operating Okada and which one is not operating Okada. You, you understand what he's saying? I understand. Yes. That. Let me now give a bit of explanation mm -hmm. to what he's saying. You see. The and I'm keeping in mind that Doc wants the difference one another opportunity. Yes, no, 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 doctor, I'm sorry. So the doctor, sorry. <laughs> you see, the difference between large-scale mining uh -huh. and a small-scale mining, let me explain. Mm -hmm. In a large-scale mining, you will go and take an acreage of land, then you do your reconnaissance or more. Or more. I mean, an acreage, a yeah. bigger land or whatever, and do your reconnaissance mm -hmm. and whatever, and then you apply for that area. And you now move in and do your mining. A small-scale mining, there is an area which the Minerals Commission has designated for small-scale mining. So when you go, they give you a portion. Mm -hmm. You are not even allowed to do any reconnaissance before that portion is given to you. Mm -hmm. So you're giving you the, the acreage given to you, but you can be a company as big as Anglo Gold. But you can come, if you're a Ghanaian. As big as Anglo Gold, but choose but, to do small-scale mining. To do small, no, no, I'm just saying that you're a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. you, are, you have money like Anglo Gold. Right. But you can choose to now do a small go to the small scale mining mm. in your district and the office small scale mining is given by the national the minerals commission, commission. In, the, in the district it's yes. not given in accra you don't apply right. for it in accra 
the larger concession, you apply for it in Accra. So what I'm saying is that it's not about the size of the company. It is the process of the allocation which differentiates between a large-scale mining and a small-scale mining. The, but what the, he the, said, the, the technology used the technology come is, in. is the, the technology is different. You see, yes. for the small-scale mining, you are not allowed to do reconnaissance before you allocated the area. Mm. For a large-scale mining, you are allowed to reconnaissance before you prospect and, and, and go and license mm. the area. So there's a difference. Mm. Let me now answer that's some of the, the things. No, no. But well, that's one of that's, 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 that's a mode okay. of operation. Oh, oh, exactly. Do, the technology is used in the mining. Shot. Okay, yes. But let me say something that he mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. He said that the minister said when you see somebody on the river, shoot him. And you're saying that it's you're in a canoe. The well, the first, the first deputy. You say if I'm on a canoe. If you have been to Ancobra and you've seen the badges which they sit on, and the badge has a, a generator, and it has the washer, and somebody is on there washing into the river, how is that the same as somebody in a canoe? You see, no, he, he didn't he, 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 he just, he just. No, but that saying. what he means. He's not saying that. Like, go around. Well. Oh, my brother. No, no, no. no. That's fine. Oh, that's my fine. brother. In the yes. context, there was a brother, on the water. No, no, no. Doing the lamps. But I know that there's a lamp up there. I know that there's a lamp up there. Yes, he went in the house. Clearly. You would know. There would be certain limits. Nobody is saying that go around, shoot people in the river. We all know that definitely that statement wouldn't go to a poor fisherman in a canoe fishing. Definitely not. So that is what I'm that is out. But I'm coming to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have, you a, have the floor. A, a, a couple of you started it. You seem to be the one. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> number one. Number one. Okay. Uh, when my very good friend uh, MP was speaking to this issue, he, he made a detour with reference to what happened in Tamale. In fact, I happen to come from that area. I'm not happy about it. And I'm excited that uh, there's a legal action that is being taken, and that is the way it's supposed to be. However, when politics is being made out of it, then I think reference also needs to be made to the NDC. If you quite remember, this Galamse tax was this is not the first time. Uh. to miss trucks and bulldozer, bulldozers were bent. <laughs> <laughs> so, as somebody will say, it's your kumwa. That said, I still stand by my position that the recommendation being made by the first deputy speaker uh, with the greatest of respect is irresponsible. And I say this because, number one, Abna, if you remember, as I did indicate, this task force was formed for a specific responsibility. I'm not interested in whether what they are doing is legal or illegal, whether it's galamsey or whatever. But government sat down and said, look, some group of people are engaging in an activity that needs to be stopped. In stopping it, we are forming a joint force called Operation Vanguard. They've been operating for what? About a year. We are told about 1,000 something people have been arrested, 100 and something have been prosecuted. So my argument is that, what is the state of that fight? What is the state? Clearly, it's not. It's not no, going to we, we, Otherwise, we, we need to have. To this, no, we, no, 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 no. We oh, need yes. an official, empirical, verifiable report from the people who are on the ground. The last time I checked, Honorable Seusu has never been to Galamse site. The first, uh, the majority leader has never been there. Who briefed him? Did he get a briefing from the Minister of Interior or from the Minister of Defense? Where are we now? From the time that we took, we started this project, are we succeeding, or we are what? Or we are getting to a place or a time that, as you said, we've gotten to the tipping point. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So we need to get an official report from that egg body. And if you Where get a report, we, that's so that you'll be able to, to give an informed suggestion. So that if you get a report that says we are in that's it's just we're yes, making it, progress, then the no, we don't need that. Be we but don't need if that. it's but, a situation but, 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 that is dire, but when we get would you support but, but, the call for shoot a to kill them? When we get to a situation where you need to kill, then it's an indictment on government. It's an indictment on that whole, uh, what do they call it, body that is being formed to deal with that issue. Because when you have a situation, even the police. Is it the, on the what, government no, no, apparently or the, the fact that we sat down all this while for this Abana, to happen? Government has a responsibility. <laughs> that is why we voted out the NDC. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why the MPP won the election was because of this gal I'm saying. And I think it was part of their campaign promise. Let me tell you, so you guys are lawyers, there are three of you. When the police is going to arrest an armed robber, I use the word what? Armed robber. And the armed robber is shooting. Every policeman will tell you that the first option 
is to try to shoot, not to kill, but to disarm. disarm. So if we are talking of an arm robber and you are supposed so to could shoot this, could to this disarm, be, be modified. Shoot no, it's, to it's, disarm. It's, it's not. It's not, not even the, the whole issue about shooting is something that should not be entertained. My argument is that we are a civilized nation. We need to come out with measures, even if it means that. Look, uh, 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 this galam says, you engage in galam say, you are arrested. The punishment should be such that it should be a deterrent. Oh, there are instances where people are put in jail for life. People are sentenced to death. Somebody who has killed somebody, they take the person to competent court of jurisdiction for him to be tried before he's sentenced to death. You cannot kill the person because the person is what? Shooting somebody. So I think it's, look, it's an emotional issue. There needs to be a solution to this issue, but I think it needs to be done right. But beyond, okay, it is an emotional issue, but also, I mean, the, the, the fact is also that Galamse is likely to get worse because we are being told of possible layoffs in certain minds. And these are people who are skilled at doing this job. What kind of Abna, opportunities let, let, or what, what, what other alternatives are there but to go into that is why as a this tax, illegality? Let me just answer it very simply. That is why as a taxpayer, I pay John Kuma to sit down and think they are the policy makers. Government's responsibility is to come out with what policies and programs to address these issues. That is why we voted for the MPP. The MPP as a government should be able to come out with programs and measures to what? To bring all these people on board. Today, as we speak, what is government's policy in terms of dealing with what small scale mining? What is government policy? We don't know. All we know is that small scale mining has been what? Has been banned. And I think that's a lazy approach. Government has been, this party has been in power for the past two years. Two years, they should have been able to come out with what? With a credible, realistic, measure or policy in dealing with this issue. As it stands now, there are people who are supposed to be legally what? Mining small scale, but they are home. There's so if, if, I want if, to use if, at this uh, point, uh, but uh, I can't say, yeah. I don't know how best to say it in English, but it's, yeah, but what Jina and Kranimu Yeah, but what Jina and Kranimu So, the point <laughs> is, you need to... Two years is, uh, about two years, we are getting... Really, two years. Is it, yes. Is, is, yeah, we are getting... Yeah. Yeah. No, but one year, uh -huh. but John, John, but one, one year is not just... One year, three months... That's 14 months. One year, three, one year, three months, months. months is That's not... Second. Let me, let me uh -huh. finish. But, but, two years. but, but you see... You see, uh -huh. you made you gave an account maximum, but there's also an account proven that says say in few age not upon or any what you want? Yeah, the worst age. Been, been, no, mm. no, they've been, no this, they, what I'm saying is, John, let's let's be honest and realistic. Look, government has a responsibility to deal with this issue. Government is doing something, but this whole approach whereby we have some people who are small scale miners who are legal, and for it's some reason, for one year, they are staying home. They are not working. I think something practical and realistic needs to be put on the table. Yeah. This is the roadmap. We have a short-term measure. The short-term measure is what? To get this operation vanguard to go into what? To stop them. What is the medium-term measure? What is the long-term measure? I think something needs to be put on the table. Very we well. cannot yes. stay for, for in 